So I've got everything kind of laid out here for the uh, next couple projects that I'm, I'm working on. Of course, here's everything for adding the second airflow meter. So the next step <coughs> is, excuse me, is going to be taking off the nose piece. And then we'll see, you know, in here is the uh, intake tube that ties the two sides of the engine together. Removing the nose is pretty simple. You just got the two uh, bolts up here in the top and the, the front kind of wedges up against the, the bumper. Mine's just going to lift out. The very first time I did this, uh, it was it was much more, it, it fought me a lot more. But um, I think it didn't this time because I don't have it in quite right. So when I go to put it in uh, this next time, I'm going to pay a little more extra attention to how this thing actually goes in. First thing I'm going to do is use this pick to remove the little metal clip that holds the... Uh, Has this connector on there? Loosen the clamp that holds the meter onto the intake tube. So we'll just come that off. So this is another Z1 unit. Pretty sure I've got an intake leak. I got this little PVC plug. I figured this would be a good time to see if this thing fits because at idle, um, my fuel trims are way off. It's dumping a lot of fuel. This gauge is reading about 1.7 psi. Uh, while I was trying to figure things out, I was just over here listening, and uh, there's my leak. <laughs> so I'm going to try patching that up and then see if there are any more leaks. That hose or that large vacuum line that goes off to the booster, turns out it is, uh, it is completely hard and ruined with black heat. Um, so I've capped it, and now let's see if I still have an intake leak. Let's apply some more air. Sounds like it might be in the crossover too. And we can see the bubbling there. But even with the clamp, that clamp has basically failed or the rubber has shrank. Uh, I put a, I did put a zip tie on this other line here and the leaking that one was leaking as well um, I'm not going to reuse those lines I'll put new ones on but basically the zip ties are going to indicate to me that the line needs to be replaced so I figured out the secret on the uh, using the passenger side so what I'll do is I'll just walk through uh, on doing the driver side so the first thing I'll do is I'll just put on the clamp this stuff really saved the day Teflon silicone lubricant. It's fairly, fairly liberal with it to make sure I get it all around the circumference. And then this just, <laughs> it's not even, uh, doesn't even put up a fight. It just goes right on. Okay, the dual intake system from Z1 has been installed uh, over here. You can see the Salem dual math translator. Uh, you got the uh, base of the wiring harness from the, the car. This was for the original math. Goes into here, then splits it off into the, the two separate connections. And then also uh, one thing, so you might notice that this is a slightly different orientation. Um, this is a, this math over here I needed to turn upside down because otherwise the connector would interfere with this box over here and it's not really a good alternative place to mount it so I'm gonna try with the MAF upside down like that hopefully it doesn't have any impact. Uh, the second thing I did after doing a little bit of reading um, so I had tucked this heat this uh, rain shield up out of the way I thought it might be nice to get fresh air coming in but actually thinking about it uh, all that's gonna do is let rain go you know just blast the air filters so I put this back down where it was supposed to and then drilled two holes. I don't know if we can see. Mm, well, that's probably too dark. But anyway, the, the studs on the air filter actually protrudes through. And then I've got a little uh, M4 nut on each one down there. So these are 
um, they're, they're pretty, it's pretty sturdy. So this is the old intake piece. Uh, this, this guy's done. We don't need it anymore. I'm actually going to fire this thing up. I know you probably want to hear what it sounds like. <laughs> so let's, let's give it a go. Not too shabby. Uh, I really wish you could hear those turbos spool up, but that's uh, <laughs> that's another day. We get some bigger turbos in there. All right, coming up next time on Z Car Garage, I am going to cover relocating the knock sensor. So what happens on some of these cars is the wiring harness gets old and brittle, and um, you cannot access the uh, the knock sensor location because it's up underneath. The, uh, the plenum on the engine block. So what I've got is a, a new uh, sub-harness pigtail from Wire and Specialties. I include this really cool sticker. Uh, so this is going to plug onto the factory wiring harness. This end will go onto the NOx sensor. And then from Hitachi, the OEM sensor manufacturer, I've got the new NOx sensor. So I will cover how to install this and where it gets relocated on the next episode. So thanks for watching, really appreciate you guys. Um, please like and subscribe and uh, see you next time. Thanks.